Today's episode is brought to you by Applaudable.net. With really bad people that have no values, they'll take that culture down. So uh, all three of those work hand in hand, but I do believe that the values and the people set up the culture. Coach Kevin Eastman, thanks for joining us today. I know you're passionate about a number of things and uh, just for the audience, your background is that you were head of operations of uh, the Clippers, uh, the LA Clippers in the NBA, and you also assistant at the Celtics for a period, including the, the grand final that was attained, I think it was 08, was it? Is that correct? Yes. 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 So, so you're, you've had an extensive history of over a decade as an assistant to Doc Rivers. So that's, that's the background of the sporting side of things. And you've written a book, Why the Best Are the Best, and you have a, a core 25 power words that you've talked about within that particular book. But I want to ask what makes you so interested in, in communication and words? Yeah, I, I think for me, um, the the way this all came about is that uh, I, I really, I do a lot of reading, I do a lot of listening, I do a lot of discussing um, with people who have been successful either in, in my business, uh, the, the world of sports, or in other businesses. And what I what I came to find out is they, they all use the same words when they're talking about things that or reasons that got them to where they are today. And because of that, I started to log the most common words. And what I found was that that words are powerful because um, if it is a single word, it's easy to remember. Uh, if you can define it for yourself and, and, and put a power behind it as to how that word can help you, then every time that word might come up uh, in your day, you can refer to it. It's very quick. It's very easy. You've already defined it for yourself. And what I found was that uh, the best of the best actually do this. They may not consciously do it the way I put it in the book, mm -hmm. but the words that always come out are very consistent across the board with the most successful people. So I've always thought words have power and that as we mature and get older, uh, probably the, one of the most important things we could do is uh, always be conscious of word choice, uh, which words uh, will resonate with a particular person or group, or even in my case, uh, speaking with, with the crowd. Um, so I, I, I tried to pick uh, the words that I thought were most common. I, I've told this story many a time, but I've started out with 92 words. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask that. 92 words. It's The book would be like, you know, that thick. So uh, I whittled it down to the 25, and, and um, it's just that words have always been important to me, and then I found out just through happenstance with all of my reading and, and studying that uh, really words are important to the most successful people. There are a lot of words that you've used that probably, like you say, are common to a lot of people, and I... I Things like commitment, sacrifice, uh, you know, talent, respect. Um, but I wanted to pick up on a couple that you've used in particular. There's, there's the term circles, which is around the people that you associate yourself with. Do you want to expand on, on that particular power word? Well, I, I think logic states that uh, those you spend the most time to are those that you're also going to hear the most things from. So what are you hearing? What are you taking in? Is it shaping you? Now, studies and great thought leaders in the past have said that uh, you are the sum of the five closest people uh, around you. And um, what that basically says to me is that, in fact, uh, what you hear and what you take in can stick. So I just tell players and people in general, um, just evaluate your circles. And I think there's a couple of circles. There's the fun circle. They're the ones that maybe you go out and have a glass of wine with or you laugh with. Um, but I'm not sure they ever get you to truly where you want to go in your craft, your profession, your life. Uh, but they're good to have because I think you have to uh, smile every now and then and you have to uh, enjoy life. Uh, and then there's the circles of impact. Those are the people that um, 
that are willing to tell you the truth. Uh, they have great wisdom. They can impact your life and your career. So um, that's why I think circles are important. And when I speak to to athletes in particular, and certainly to uh, to anyone out there, even when I do my corporate speaking, is that a lot of people think circles are uh, all about what what people can do for you. But I'm not sure that's the most important part and that should be the lens with which you choose your circles. I believe the lens should be, what do those people do to you? Do they make you a little lazier? Do they make you a uh, not as good a teammate? Uh, do they make you, uh, don't worry about that, you don't have to go into that depth and detail in, in, in your presentation to the uh, to the company or the sales force that day. Just just kind of do it kind of so-so. Well, your circles can do things to you. Um, obviously, a circle, they're your friends, they're people that, that uh, you may trust, they're gonna do some things for you. But just be careful what they're doing for you doesn't do something to you. So one thing I noticed about the words you've also chosen that they leap across all generations. So that concept of circles would resonate with a young audience as well as an older audience. So is that by design? Oh, no question, because no matter how old you are, no matter what your, 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 your race, your gender, it doesn't matter. Um, I don't think anyone work, wakes up each morning saying, boy, I want to be the worst I can possibly be at my job. I would like to be the worst person in the world, not just in my company, the world. I don't think we do that. I think we do wake up hoping to have a good day. I think we do wake up um, thinking that um, I, I would like to prove my value today. I would like people to notice me today. Well, I just believe that in order to, to get to that uh, uh that level and, and what people seek is how can I do that? Uh, and what I found for me is, uh, you know, where these words come in is they can help you do that. They can help you become a little bit better. Um, and we're not trying to say you have to be the best at what you do because that's hard to do because only one person can be the best at that particular thing, but you can be your best. Mm -hmm. And that to me is the challenge each and every day we, we wake up. Are we doing what we need to do that day to become our best at whatever it is? My job, my career, uh, my life, my uh, role as a, a parent, whatever that is. And these words are, are kind of, they can, they can kind of all of a sudden say, hey, pause. Now look, uh, with this, you said you're gonna live the, in, in the world of the truth. If you are, then what you're bringing today, that's not what you said you were gonna bring when you interviewed for this job. You said you're going to do a lot more. You said you're going to be a lot better. So, but with the 25 words, what I ask people to do is this, because you kind of uh, intimated it, uh, Craig, in that you said, uh, you know, people have heard these words. Yes, they have. And they'll say, well, I already have those words in my vocabulary. But here's the difference. The best of the best, those who become their best at what they do, they don't just have these words in their vocabulary. They actually live these words every day. And then I also tell people this, if you don't think these words are important to you, to your life, to your career, to your craft, or as a corporate leader or a coach to your team, then do me a simple favor, put a, a little two letter word in front of every one of these 25 power words, and then tell me if they're important. For instance, what if your company uh, or your team had no truth whatsoever? No one told the truth. What if no one did anything intentionally? What if there were no standards? Mm -hmm. What if there was no accountability? And you can go on and on yeah. with all the words. All of a sudden, that two-letter simple word, no, brings power to these words. Mm, absolutely. So the other one that and you, I think you mentioned, intentional. So in, what, what's the word intentional represent? What you do on purpose to fulfill your purpose. So whatever your role is in the company, whatever your role is in the team, whatever your role is for the organization, when you go in that day, what are you intentionally doing to make sure that your team, your company, your organization, and every bit as importantly, yourself and feeling good about yourself, what are you doing intentionally 
to fulfill that job and maybe even become better at that job, maybe even add more value uh, to that job and that company, that organization, that team. So, um, you know, I, I often use Oprah Winfrey as the, as the role model for this word intentional because she basically, if, if any of your listeners would YouTube uh, Oprah Winfrey and intentional or intentionality, uh, you'll find that she built her, her Oprah Winfrey network on this concept, on this word. She was very intentional. She's very intentional each and every day about what she wants to get out of her day. Like Ray Allen, one of the players we had with the Boston Celtics, one of the best shooters ever to play the game of basketball, uh, he would intentionally each and every day practice the shots that he was going to get in our offense against that team or those teams in the NBA uh, so that when he was there in the game, he had already been there in practice. He had already put in the proper preparation uh, that leads to, 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 to successful outcomes. Mm. So uh, that's, to me, what intentional is all about. And with the Celtics, did you find that most of the players at that level, when you're talking about the best of the best, they won a championship at that time, were they equally as intentional in their approach or did they all have varying approaches? as players uh, yeah here's the thing each time you take a, a next step up the ladder uh there's more people that are equal to if not better than you mm -hmm. because you're, you're rising look there's only 450 professional nba players in the whole world think of all the, the people who play basketball so they're they are the best of the best but there's also pecking orders within the best of the best but what you find is any any great player or any name player that someone, one of your listeners, even if they don't follow basketball, they could probably say uh, LeBron James, uh, Steph Curry, Kawhi Leonard, right? They could say these names, uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo. They can say these names because they've heard about them. Every one of them is intentional. That's how they got there. Mm. And for the most part, the overwhelming majority of players in the NBA do live with with intentionality. They do actually understand that certain things have to be done every day uh, in order for me to not just thrive in my profession, but stay in the NBA. You, you were part of two organizations um, and headed the Clippers. And with, with that, you obviously are trying to build an organization that has good culture. And one of the things that you said is culture is only one aspect of an organization and possibly the third most important aspect. What, what, what are the others that you see are important to round that picture of what a good organization is? Yeah, and this may be a, a little bit against uh, popular belief and what all the books are saying right now. There's no question culture is important. But... I think there are two other things that are equal to and maybe more important than the culture because they help the culture become the culture. And uh, basically the first one is values. Uh, what are your values uh, as an organization? What are your values as, uh, as a team? What are your values uh, as the leader? Because those values are going to be the lens through which you do almost everything in your organization. If you value integrity, you certainly are not going to hire somebody who's already proven to be a cheater, right, in its simplest form. So values are important. The other thing that I think is equal to, if not greater importance to the culture, is the people that you, you bring in. And this is where the values comes in. The values are the lens through which you hire your people. We don't want same thinking people. We don't want uh, same background people. We don't we, we want to diversify our staff, but we do want a commonality in that if you join the organization, you become a member of our team, you share the same core values that that the organization does. So if you take the values and the people that leads into the culture, because, you know, you can have a great culture. Thanks for joining us for a basketball conversation. Feel free to start a conversation of your own with other Oswish super fans by commenting below. And I look forward to sharing our next conversation with you soon. I hope you'll join us again sometime. Catch you later.